All this is Dr. Mobin Sayed from drbean.com. Welcome to one more show. Today we are going to talk about the Pfizer vaccine's efficacy in Israel after its usage for some time. The data that I'm going to present to you is published in New England Journal of Medicine. The data is from December till end of January or the 1st of February. And there is some other data elements as well that I had to curate from other pieces, from other articles. So let me just very quickly show you those and then we will dive into it. The curiosity that I had was, number one, the uh, what is the efficacy compared to what was the efficacy reported in the trial results? That is one. And secondly, I wanted to understand if the infections were occurring for the um, vaccinated folks and if hospitalizations or deaths were occurring as well. Because I think you know that most of the vaccines, I think almost all of them, have been saying that his zero hospitalizations or zero deaths. So I wanted to kind of understand that, uh, that aspect of the vaccines. And I wanted to see the side effects as well. So let's start. This is drbean.com. Here is the report that I'm going to be presenting to you in my usual illustrated way. If you can see here, they have the data of 596,618 people. So more than half a million in each arm. So half more about 600,000 vaccinated folks versus 600,000 non-vaccinated folks. Then here is some more data that I had to curate. The, the reason that I got this data was I was trying to figure out what are the side effects. And that report, which I just showed you, was not very clear on the side effects. And then I also wanted to understand the number of deaths that occurred in those folks who had vaccination and the deaths that were because of COVID. So I found one more article, not a research study somewhere. So that is here. Then this is the uh, Israel's uh, report on the vaccine efficacy. Unfortunately, I cannot read it very well. So I was thinking I'm going to request someone who can read this to sit down with me and kind of translate it. And we present it together or we translate it. We do something. <laughs> I do not know how to read it. Uh, then this is another article from where I collected some more side effects data. And then this is another article where the children who are being vaccinated, there is some data from them. So these are the various sources from where I have collected the data. And now let's look at the data itself. So once again, these the Gifts of Humanity project continues. Let's move on to the vaccine efficacy from Israel. So the vaccine is Pfizer-BioNTech. Vaccine type is a messenger RNA type vaccine, so newer technology. Vaccine name is BNT162B2. And the study that I'm gonna show you or the data observation that we have is from December 20th, 2020 to Feb 1st, 2021. So almost uh, all of January and part of December. One thing to keep in mind is that during this time, a new variant was in Israel as well that was causing a lot of infections too. So Israel, or actually all the world, wherever the new variants were going, were under extra stress at this time. So with this, what they did was they chose folks who were vaccinated, almost 600,000, and then they took another 600,000 similar population that was not vaccinated and compared them one to one. Here is what is the result. So let me show you, this is their PDF and the link is in the description as well. So I went over this PDF and collected majority of the data. At one point, I actually changed one of their pages in their orientation as well. So here, if you see, this page has a very important table, but I do not know for what reason, maybe just for the, the data and size, they had put it this way and it was difficult to read. So I changed it and I'll present that to you here as well. So with this, uh, let's actually look at the data. 
I think this is a very interesting report. So the way I'm going to present the data is that the kind of um, outcome in a vaccinated person, the efficacy of the vaccination compared to non-vaccinated person, and then the report that they had given in trial. So we can see what is the difference in them. So first of all, folks who became sick documented infected people. So they're not talking about asymptomatic people, but those individuals who were vaccinated, then they did become PCR positive, for example. And they have given the data in this observation in two ways. Day 14 to 20 after the first dose or day seven or more after the seven dose, uh, second dose. So they've given us data in both cases. So let's look at it. For example, documented infection. So uh, infection was proven. Day Dose one, day 14 to 20, 46% efficacy. So that means almost half of the people who were vaccinated did, compared to those who were not vaccinated, became infected. So vaccine did not stop the infection 14 to 20 days after the first dose. And the confidence interval is 40 to 51, which means the range could be from 40 to 51% efficacy. Now, dose two, seven days after the dose two, that is their completion of the vaccination milestone. So at the completion of vaccination, 92% efficacy was observed. And they had reported in the trial 95% or 94 and 95. So I think that is a pretty decent uh, efficacy. Their range was 88 to 95%. So meaning in the actual population where they're actually collecting the data from. So if, if you extrapolated it to a wider uh, data point, then it would be anywhere from 88 to 95%, pretty good after the second dose, seven days after the second dose. This is similar number that they had reported, so good job. Symptomatic COVID-19. So those who actually were vaccinated, became positive, and then developed symptoms as well. After the 14 to 20 days of the, of the dose one, 57% efficacy. And the range, is 50 to 63% efficacy. Not bad, half of the population gets saved once more. And seven days after the dose two, that is a completion milestone, 94% efficacy and the range 87 to 98%. Again, they had reported 95%. So pretty good, pretty close. So I like that. So good job on that as well. Now this area, is where I was hoping that they would have lesser in number. So let's see, hospitalization. After 14 to 20 days of the dose one, 74% efficacy. I like it. 56 to 86% is the range. So what they're saying is that if somebody got the first dose and then they are 14 to 20 days beyond the first dose, even when they haven't gotten the second dose, the chances of hospitalization is 74% less or efficacy is 74%. The, the chance and the efficacy are slightly different. So that's why I don't want to misuse the term. The efficacy is 74% compared to uh, non-vaccinated. Uh, and seven days after the dose two, the efficacy is 87% for hospitalization. Now, this, this set of diseases or, or milestones were not presented like this in the trial. And I have the trial data open here as well, just for your reference. And we have gone over this data together in the past. So this is why it is all highlighted that I have presented this to you once before as well. So I just have it open here for reference in case we need to. So back here, hospitalization, severe, and death, they didn't have those separate milestones here, but they reported 75% efficacy for severe cases. So let's say 
hospitalization is kind of there is no a report or comparison or match there but if we look at severe disease again somebody got vaccinated 14 days to 20 days after the first dose 62 percent efficacy from protection from severe disease and the range look at the range range kind of drops 39 to 80 percent from severe which is interesting and then, but after the seventh day of the dose two, which is their uh, uh, spoken milestone that now you are fully vaccine uh, protected, 92% efficacy from severe disease. So still there is a chance of uh, um, becoming severe, but efficacy is really good. So 75 to 100% is the range. So the vaccine can potentially be 75 percent effective 200 percent effective and i would talk about this data in a second then deaths in the vaccinated folks by COVID, not just general deaths but those folks who were vaccinated and then they died of COVID after 14 to 20 day, days of dose one, 72% efficacy and range is pretty wide, 19% to 100%. And then for the dose two, the data is not applicable because in this time frame, in the, the study's time frame, there were no deaths in those folks who were beyond seven days of dose two. That I think is a pretty good number. Now, I want to then balance that number with one more information, and that information is here. If you see here, this report, this is uh, Israel's Prime Minister Netanyahu. He comes out on, I believe this was at least reported on February 9, if you see here. And what he said was, he said, I want to give you a jarring fact. Over the last month, so that would mean if he said it on Feb 9, that would mean it kind of spans two third of January. Over the last month, the last 30 days, 1,536 people have died of COVID-19 in the state of Israel. More than 97% of them had not been vaccinated. Fewer than 3% had been vaccinated. So I calculated 3%. And so that is 46. 3% of 1,536 is 46. So lesser than 46 people were in this time frame. That would be probably 10th of January till 9th of February, if that was the cutoff date. Article doesn't say that what was the window that Netanyahu was talking about. But let's say this was the time. So in this time, those who were vaccinated, 46 deaths occurred in them. Now, I do not know they were vaccinated the, the day before or they were vaccinated and then seven days passed, 14 do days passed, first dose, second day, dose, all that data is not with me. So this is just a important data point to put in front of us with its limitations. What this tells me is that the death from COVID is possible in vaccinated folks as well. This is one, one thing that we had been uh, kind of celebrating that, well, at least in the vaccinated folks, there is the chances of death are low. But here you can see that there are some, now they compare to an unvaccinated. 97% in unvaccinated versus 3% here. So if you ask me that, hey, would you take a vaccine? Yes, 100% I would take a vaccine. And I am, to, so today is 30th. I am just waiting one, two or three more days when I'll, I'll receive the email to, to become eligible and then go somewhere and uh, get myself registered for vaccination. So I would take vaccination. And But these are the numbers. Okay, continuing on. Then was the side effects. And for side effects, before I go to the side effect, I want to share this table with us. 
to see what is the data here. So if you see this table, here we have period. So this is the study from where I extracted the data and illustrated it. So 14 to 20 days after the first dose, documented infection. We just went over this. But what I wanted to show you was the number of deaths. So if you see here, they say not applicable because in this, after these seven days of the second dose, there were no deaths till the study's time. OK, and I want to show you one more data point that I thought was interesting, and that is Here, this is also an important data point. And this data point is, so check this out. This is important. So 600,000 vaccinated, about 600,000 vaccinated versus 600,000 not vaccinated. And then if you see here, this is the starting from, read down here, starting from the day of administration of the first dose of the vaccine. So this is, let's say this was the day zero of the first dose of the vaccine. And as we continue to move forward, I was interested in looking at the deaths due to COVID, not all cause mortality, but death due to COVID. And here, if you see unvaccinated on the zero day, zero, vaccinated, zero. This is number, this is not percentage. On day seven, unvaccinated, again, 600,000 and 600,000, one and zero. On 14 days, six and two. And here are the numbers as well. So they keep uh, taking that group out. So six and two. Then here, 16 and five. Here, 27 and seven. Day 35, 30 and nine. Day 42, 32 and nine. So vaccine definitely has a result in reducing the deaths. So I wanted to share these two data points. In this uh, document, you have the other situations as well. For example, documented inf in infections, symptomatic infection, hospitalization, severe diseases, and so on. So this is the discussion. Now, what I also wanted to discuss was the side effects. Side effects are not in this document. So I, as I sure, showed you before, I pulled them from various articles. So there is a grain of salt in there that the articles may be pulling data from various dates, from various groups. So these are not to be generalized for all. Hopefully they are, but still the data is being pulled from various sources. So I'm going to show you which source uh, here. This one, this is one source. Then. I have one more source here. If you see this source, 0.3% of Israelis reported side effects to doctor. And here they have this number that I am showing you, this number, 2.768200. So that is the number I'm using. And most of the data is what I took from here. So here is what they saw. So no vaccine-related fatalities. So once again, as we saw that Netanyahu did say that there were some from at least uh, maybe January 10th to February 9. And here this report says no fatalities. And I'm going to read it out to you so that um, so this is the routers, and it is saying false. There is no evidence that Pfizer-BioNTech vaccine has caused any fatalities. Now, when Netanyahu said deaths, that was because of COVID, not because of the vaccine itself. So here they are saying vaccine reactions or vaccine itself did not cause any deaths. So that is one. So no vaccine-caused or vaccine-related fatalities. Then other side effects experienced by 0.3% of this population, 2, 7, 6, 8, 200. What were the side effects? 50% of the people reported arm pain after the first shot. And then 22% people reported arm pain after the second shot. 
this was the most common side effects reported. Then 41% generally unwell. They reported that, hey, I'm not feeling well after the first shot. 73% reported generally, generally not feeling well after the second shot. 286, this is not a percentage, this is the number. 286, sorry, 87 neurological symptoms after the first shot, all of them resolved. 97 neurological symptoms after the second shot. Allergic reaction and anaphylaxis. 165 allergic reactions, including anaphylaxis. What I could not find was the exact number for anaphylaxis. And I think the, the reason is the language barrier. I could not translate easily or find these data points easily. So what I'm going to do is this. I'm going to reach out to Dr. Eli Schwartz, and I'm going to request him if he can join us and give us some update, and he can probably help with these translations too. So allergic reactions, including anaphylaxis, 165. Again, 2.8 million-ish people after the first shot, and 47 people after the second shot. So that is the data for uh, this vaccine. And once again, let me just show you this data here. Um, this data is here. If you go down to the bottom of it. So this is the data, the vast majority. The reason I'm showing it to you is that so you can follow this. All these links are in the description. And finally, this one, I am yet not a big fan of uh, vaccines to children. I feel there is a risk in there. But hundreds of children between the age of 12 and 16 who have been given the Pfizer-BioNTech vaccination in Israel experienced no serious side effects, a senior official has told The Guardian. One of the first signs that COVID-19 inoculation could be safe for minors before clinical trial results. So this is the discussion for today. I'm going to um, hang up and then we'll chit chat. So uh, once again, thank you very much for your time and for listening. Uh, please like subscribe and share and if you don't want to subscribe or don't want to share then at least like and in addition there are three links in the description one is if you don't want to use paypal then one is there to buy me coffees then there is also a link to be a patreon or patron to be able to help support this work for all the medical students and nursing students and so on and then there is another link if you wanted to support this work in general. Having said that, I am going to hang up and we will talk with each other in a few minutes. So please hold on to your questions and I would respond to them in chit chat.